if you think this video is scripted and planned and everything, uh, think again. I literally just decided to put something together because um, I took the SAT today and as you know, if you've taken one, it kind of f***s up your day in terms of your schedule. I mean, you're there from like 7 a.m. to like 1 and then you don't really know what to do because you're so tired. Anyway, we're not here to talk about the SAT. We're here to talk about the iPad Pro 2018 or 2019 as some call it, uh, specifically MKBHD. And if you have watched his impressions video, um, you might have seen that a comment of mine got a considerable amount of likes. It might be the top comment. I don't know, but I said something along the lines of, not gonna lie, in my opinion, I think the iPad Pro 2018 is the most exciting Apple product that has been released in a while. And uh, some people were like, yeah, I totally agree, man. You know, I'm an illustrator, I'm a student. And some people were like, yeah, I don't really know what the hell you're talking about, it's an iPad. Um, but I'm here to kind of elaborate more on what I mean and why I'm so excited about the new iPad Pro lineup. So first of all, um, the number one reason why I love the iPad Pro 2018 or 2019 or whatever you want to call it is the radically different design. And for the first time, I can confidently say that about an Apple product, I've never seen such a big shift. I mean, and that's Apple, you know, it's they never usually change up things that drastically. I mean, the entire body has been redesigned and the iPhone uh, 5S and 5, I mean, it has a very angular looking design, which looks really killer. And then the bezels, I mean, some people are complaining, oh, well, like, the bezels are, like, thicker than the iPad Pro 10.5 inches side bezels, whatever, they're uniform, the screen is bigger, it's now 11 inches on the 10.5 inch form factor, we now have a smaller iPad Pro 12.9 inch, which looked ridiculously big in its previous gen, you know, body, chassis, whatever. I just think the thing looks phenomenal without the home button uh, and it's super thin too as marquez put it it's 5.9 millimeters thin i mean it's getting to the point where it's like a notebook sized device the apple pencil with it uh, makes it a great tool for students or illustrators and for me like i'm going to college next year i love taking handwritten notes and i have like a ton of composition notebooks i really might consider buying this because you know, the Apple Pencil has been refined significantly. We now no longer have that, quite frankly, retarded charging method. It now uh, connects or attaches itself to the body of the iPad Pro. So once again, great new design. And yeah, I'm totally excited to possibly buy one of these and test it out for my own academic um, uses, especially, like I said, note taking. Another reason I'm super excited about the iPad Pro 2018 is the new gesture-based uh, navigation. I love it on the iPhone XS, and it should be great on the iPad Pro now. USB Type-C came out of left field. I don't think anybody expected that, and I'm very proud of Apple for doing that. I mean, it's such a big step for them, a company that is so used to making these very incremental changes to their products. I think it has great potential in the future, especially if and when Apple decides to optimize iOS to better fit the pro body of the iPad. You know, maybe they might implement more Mac OS features into it. I don't know. We've yet to see people say that iOS 13 is supposed to be even better. The interface is supposed to change, et cetera, et cetera. But I mean, like, once again, it's a huge step. I like the fact that you can charge your iPhone. I love the fact that you can attach an external display, although, you know, its uses are limited. And, uh, you know, other features with USB Type-C, um, I think it's a great port, and I'm really happy that they finally implemented it into an iOS device. I also appreciate the fact that Apple relocated the Pro connector, I think that's what they call it, so you can use the folio case, the keyboard case that Apple produces for the iPad Pro and have the screen articulated at different angles. Also, in regard to the design, um, if you didn't already know, I was a huge Apple fanboy from the age of like seven to probably like 13, and I always envisioned or you know saw other people's creations or uh, concepts of a MacBook iPad crossover, you know, something big like that, small bezels, kind of a Mac OS like experience. And although it's not like that at this moment, um, it's gotten even closer to that dream that many have had, including myself. So when I saw the iPad Pro, I was like, wow, this is finally becoming a reality. We're getting closer to that perfectly portable Mac iPad hybrid that might solve a lot of our issues, you know, in regard to portability and power and user experience, etc. I'm really going on a tangent here. <laughs> Last two things I want to talk about are the raw performance of the iPad Pro. I mean, apparently the A12 is an absolute monster. They claim it outperforms some Intel Core i7s. Uh, we've yet to see that, but um, from what they demoed on stage, it seems very, very powerful, especially accompanied with the four gigs of RAM found in the, uh, I think it's like a 64 to 512 gigabyte models, and then they have six gigs of RAM in the one terabyte version. I don't know who the hell would buy that, but you know, you do you if you're that person. 
And then there's the pro apps that coincide with the new performance. They demoed a Photoshop thing. It was insane. It had like so many layers and just a huge, I think it was like a three gig file and they rendered it out and they did some, you know, augmented reality stuff. Really cool. And it's very exciting that this kind of work can be done on the iPad Pro. I just pray, I pray that Apple will continue to implement more desktop oriented apps on the iPad Pro to make it, you know, a useful buy rather than just a, you know, glorified media consumption device, which many think it is. So now that I cover things that I like about it, um, let's talk about some of the downsides, some of the things that kind of left us like, what? Uh, first of all, the display is liquid crystal, you know, liquid retina, whatever they call it, you know, it's it's LCD, it's the previous technology. A lot of people were griping about that, you know, oh, why isn't there OLED in the display? You know, it's so disappointing, the product's so expensive. At this moment, OLED is not capable of the ProMotion or 120 hertz refresh rate, so I think that's the primary reason why Apple stuck with LCD, and I'm totally fine with that. If you ever use an iPad Pro in person with ProMotion, it's an insane experience. Uh, and I recommend you don't because it might ruin every other device for you with 60 hertz display. And then there's the price. I mean, it starts at $799 or pretty much $800. And then you add the $130 that you pay for the Apple Pencil second generation. I'm kind of bummed that they just don't include it. I mean, you're already paying that much. But once again, I mean, you have to consider you know, this device might be right for the right person. I mean, if you're an illustrator, I heard a lot of artists love this device, especially for drawing. And if you're a student who takes a lot of handwritten notes, maybe you want that all-in-one solution. It's worth it to some people. It won't be worth it to a lot of people. That's why they have the iPad 2018, you know, the simple A10 oriented, regular sized iPad 9.7 inch. So that's probably worth it to most people. The iPad Pro is a more niche product probably but it still looks really sexy and has a lot of capability under the hood with its hardware and its design. And once again, the Apple Pencil second generation. But yeah, I mean, it's expensive. There's no denying that. And you know, we've yet to find out whether it's truly worth it. You know, we have to wait for the reviews to come out. I'd personally love to review it. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to. I mean, I kind of sold my soul um, financing this iPhone XS Max. So I don't know, maybe I'll get some hands on. We have yet to see. I just think that overall, Apple has really refined the design of the iPad Pro. A lot of its weird quirks have been ironed out. And uh, yeah, that's kind of the reason why I'm really excited about it. And that's all I really have to say about the iPad Pro uh, 2018 or 2019, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm surprised I've kept this under 20 minutes unscripted. I kind of just decided to get up here and talk about the product. I've kind of had ideas in my head all day. And uh, yeah, I hope this was valuable to you in some way. Uh, once again, I'd love to do a review on this. So stay tuned. It might happen. I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like in the video, comment if you have any questions or suggestions, and subscribe for more content like this. And as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one.